stand together tonight get our service underway. Certainly glad to have each and every one of you with us. Uh, let's get our mind on the Lord and see what the Lord has in store for us tonight. Father, we appreciate you. I'm so thankful for the privilege to be here, Lord. I thank you for our servant, Lord, that's come by to minister to us tonight. God, I pray that you be in a mighty way. Lord, I pray that we would give you all the praise that you deserve, Lord. You've been so wonderful to us, God. We want to be careful to praise you, Lord. Bless everything done in this service. May be pleasing and receptive in your sight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Yeah. 
Give tonight unto the Lord. As you're doing so, we have just a few announcements to remind you of this weekend for Sunday worship as usual, Sunday morning at 10. This upcoming Sunday night, we're in our annual Christmas candlelight service that evening at 6 p.m. So, uh, such a great opportunity for us to uh, fellowship with our community so we hope that your friends and family will come out make sure you invite someone out that they can be blessed by it. Our, our student ministries and youth ministries will be a big part of that service so you're not going to want to miss that and then a week from tonight will be our annual Christmas dinner at Jeep Brand Barbecue and once again I emphasize this this Sunday is the deadline to turn in your money because I need to give them an accurate count on who's coming so please help us with that if you have not paid. Amen. Amen. Isn't the Lord good to us? Amen. What a blessed people we are tonight. Amen. Any needs tonight by the uplifted hand? I know there's uh, always receiving prayer requests uh, throughout the week, so just remember so many people during this season and time. Amen. Let's turn our attention to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thankful for all your goodness upon us thank you lord that we can come all before the throne of grace and we can petition heaven for our earthly needs tonight god we are so so thankful lord we couldn't praise you enough for who you are and what you're doing in our midst god i pray lord that you'd stir our hearts again tonight lord that we would just lord not only worship but god we would have a hunger and a desire to receive from the word and to see your spirit manifested in our midst Thank you, Lord, for this people, Lord, those that are here, those that couldn't be here, God, our young people as they're out and about, Lord, uh, we pray the, for protection over them. Now, Lord, take the gift and the giver, Lord, those that have and have not, that they may further the kingdom of God here and around the world. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship the Lord as we can. Lord, I glorify your name. 
Just lift our hands and let's give him glory in this place. Let's create an atmosphere that we can receive from heaven tonight. Praise his name. Hallelujah. 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 Let's sing this other one. I'm going to ask Brother Compton to come on and I want to get him on the floor and give him plenty of time. But um, certainly glad that he's with us tonight, aren't you? Hey, Amen. He's coming through town and just really felt uh, led for him to come on and be with us. But uh, if we could sing that old song, Lord, prepare me. Thank you. 
tonight. I may love him tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's a privilege to be here tonight. We give honor to your pastor, Brother Brett Lewis, not just the brother in the Lord, but a friend. Appreciate what he's doing for the Lord here. Appreciate all of you. Uh, just come to minister out of my spirit tonight. That was kind of since we was talking the last few weeks trying to find the mind of God and coming down here was praying. Take a little while to get this way. So I've got plenty of time to pray. Some people says, I never have time to pray. Well, you can pray going to work. You can pray coming back. That's what it means, pray without ceasing. You can find some time to pray if you really want to pray. I don't know about you. I'll sit down in Walmart and talk to myself. <laughs> That's what they think you're doing anyway. You know, if they get out there and cuss and act ugly, they, they think that's normal. But if you're sitting there talking to Jesus, you're abnormal. But if you got your Bibles tonight, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm going to give you what the Lord gave me, share with you tonight. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to Second Corinthians 7 and 1. I'm going to give you a little something, probably different tonight. I mean, you got your Bible. Hold it up. Let me see. You, you don't. Now, how you know I'm telling you the truth? You don't have your Bible. Well, I'm just going to take your word. It's in too important not to have your Bible. Need your Bible. It says, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting wholeness in the fear of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for opportunity and privilege to preach behind this pulpit. God, I ask you to guide my lips of clay. God, let the Spirit come down and do a work. Father, I ask you to hide me behind the old rugged cross. Lord, I ask you to let them see you and not me. God, I pray these prayers with all sincerity. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. And I want to talk to you on this subject and uh, on pursuing the promise. You know, there's a lots of promises in this Bible. And uh, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1, it says the promises are yea and amen. 
It didn't say they're not yea and no. It says yea and amen. But it's amazing to me that when God always speaks, he's always, 99% of the time he's positive. He's always giving you something to reach out and grab. I mean, look what Jesus uh, uh, did. This is the time of year that we celebrate, and people get so upset. There's no need to be upset. We don't know exactly what day Jesus was born. It's just the day we set aside to honor that. If it, up, if it upsets you, I'm sorry. If you want to celebrate it in October, go ahead, whatever. That won't upset me. But it's just the day we honor the coming of our Lord and, and Savior Jesus Christ. And God thought so much of us that he wrapped himself in flesh. And, uh, and that's that time of year that we celebrate his coming. And, and he paid a dear price uh, for us and paid a dear price for your healing. Sometimes the promises of God, it does seem like they're, it's hard to pursue. Anybody ever notice that? You can start believing God for something, and, and you can really go through. But like I said, when God promises you, you something, uh, most of the time you can count on you. What's the most of the time? You can always count on God. It's not God. It's never the problem. He cannot lie. And like I said, he, he preaches these He. Uh, gives us these promises all in the Word. Well, we spend all night talking about the promises. And it's amazing how he works. Sometimes it's hard to understand. We know the story how he uh, sent Moses to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. Well, we could pray to our just on that story by itself. But uh, there's some misconcepts about destiny and promises. It's never God's... Uh, thing in his mind for you to not acquire what he promised you, but you have to pursue it. You have to understand it. And, and just because you have a promise, it doesn't mean you can't mess up the promise. Let me, let me tell you, there's a lots of words going out nowadays we need to clarify. There's a lots of words being said that we need to study to, to prove these doctrines and theories. But, but I noticed the, in Moses' story, if you turn with me, if you got your Bibles to the fourth chapter of Exodus, I want to show you something. How many believe that Moses was, was his destiny was to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt? You believe that God chose him to do that? And we know that he uh, told him, he told him to go down there and, and set the people free out of uh, Egypt. They had been crying for deliverance. Or if every day we need to cry for deliverance and healing and pursue God's promises right now. But when he was talking to him at the burning bush, he gave him some instructions. How many, let's see, let me see if, how many have been reading your Bible. How many signs did God give Moses? One, two, three. Nobody's talking to me tonight. He's actually given three signs. A lot of times people can remember the first two. He could throw his rod down and it turned into a serpent. And the second one, he put his hand in his bosom and it turned into, well, I don't know if I'd want that sign. Turn into leprosy and then stick it back in and it was, oh, I, I would almost be scared. I'd stick it in there and it would come, wouldn't come out the second time. <laughs> right. But the third sign he was given was actually, to take water from the river and pour it out, and it turned to blood. Go read it right here in this chapter here. Now, God had appeared to Moses and, and said, Go set my people free. He was designed to do this, and we know the whole story. Uh, I mean, finally, he understood who he was uh, at that time, and he killed the Egyptian, and he had to flee to the wilderness and, and lived in the wilderness 40 years till God appeared in a burning bush and began to give him these instructions. But lots of people, they don't understand about pursuing and putting things in, in order. And just stay with me tonight as I lay this out with you. Like it says, in, you look on the, about the 24 uh, verse of Exodus 4 and 24. And it came to pass by the way of the end, let me 
give you the scenario again. He had been, he had been out in the wilderness, and he was on his way to Egypt with his wife. I think he went by Jethro's house first. If you read that, this is his father-in-law, and and as he came to pass by the way of the end, this scripture says the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Boy, that throws you. You mean he was designed to bring the people out? The Lord was fixing to kill him? Why is it? God is a God of details. And a lot of times when he gives you a promise, there's a condition with it. A lot of times, and it's just, just not, to, and I'm, I'm trying to preach this to you because it seems to be so difficult in the house of God that people healed and delivered because they don't understand. They think it's just automatic. You know, Jesus healed them all in places, but he also told some of them, go and sin no more, that's the worst thing. It, you know, if you pursue the promise of God, it don't necessarily mean it's going to be easy. If, if he would have told Moses, I mean, you're going to have to plague Pharaoh 10 times, and then when you get into the wilderness, all the, all the people are going to come apart no, not going to be unity, and they're going to worship false gods and all this. If I didn't hear I said, I don't know if I'm going to do this job, God. So when God gives you a promise, it's not always like it looks. Sometimes you're going to have to go through a hard spot with this promise. Sometimes you have to lean on the word. Sometimes you're going to have to pursue with all diligently to do what God called you to do. Isn't it amazing when he go prophesying to you? Pharaoh, the first time he said, let my people go, Pharaoh got mad. Lots of times when you get a promise, sometimes when you get prayed for, the, actually the symptoms sometimes get worse. So many times we need to understand that we got to press through and pursue the promise of God and just believe what he says and look at the circumstance. But here's this man designed, and the angel of the Lord is standing there to destroy him. There's a point to be made. And there's this, the Lord there going to kill him. His wife noticed, noticed it, and it says the poor took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of his son. His son had not be, been circumcised. And he gets me to the point. The circumcision of the Old Testament is replaced in the New Testament of circumcision of the heart. That's what we must. And lots of people are not understanding this process. And, and, and they don't. They think God spoke it, so it's just how it is, no matter what I do. And we got lots of crazy uh, doctrines that's, that's uh, uh, come out here. I've noticed some of the things. And we need to be, we need to study, study some of this stuff out and, and, and not to take it for face value sometimes. It's important that we understand that the Bible says that at the end time that there will be signs and wonders and miracles done by false prophets. And they're going to teach unrighteousness. We live in a day that people don't want to teach righteousness. This in Corinthians, it, it, it talks about, the, uh, you know, the cleanse herself of the fitness. It says flesh. And the spirit and perfect holiness. Don't get upset. I'm not going to preach the close line message. I didn't come to put anybody in hell tonight. I'm not going to tell you. Listen, I was raised in the air. Any of you raised in the air that you couldn't do nothing in church? You got a few hands. Couldn't go to bowling alley. Couldn't go to the chicken ring together. It, when I prayed, you couldn't go to the ball game. If you played Monopoly, they didn't want you to use dice. You had to have a spinner thing. I personally didn't see anything different. You could gamble on the spinner, don't they do that? Or roll it. <laughs> but we couldn't do nothing. And you women always got the, the, the worst of it. But the truth of it is, when I begin to get grown in the Lord, I begin to uh, 
look at this, and I found out about 15 of the time when it talks of wholeness, and we're talking about sanctification is what we're talking about. The Methodists believe in sanctification. You ever read Wesley's work? He taught hard sanctification. And, uh, but it only talks about 15% on the outside, another 85% on the inside. I, I got reading this, but we'll preach 85% on the outside. We used to. I know Brett and me, I don't preach it either. I, I stopped preaching uh, wholeness on the outside in churches because this church preached this way, and you go to that church, and they preach that way, and if you took what they said down to that church, you caused that pastor thing, or if I took what he's there and took it down there, you caused the confusion. The pastor hope he never seen you anymore. But we can't throw out this thing where it says perfect wholeness. And, of course, when we get talking about wholeness, here we go with nowadays the the lingo nowadays has changed. You ever heard people say, well, that's being religious. you got the spirit of religion. Everybody, anybody ever heard people say, you got the spirit of religion? Okay? It, or, or legalistic. You're being legalistic. You ever heard them terms? And sometimes I think they uh, don't study the word, and, uh, and I think they has lost the concept of righteousness because we're supposed to uh, have righteousness. Now, of course, when you say that, the first thing you'll get is, well, Jesus made just the righteousness of God. And this is where we have to get into studying. The Bible says to study to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. We've got to study the... Uh, Show ourselves uh, approved. What does righteousness mean anyway? It means the quality of being morally correct or justifiable. Well, we've lost that in America, haven't we? The left wants to make you think they're right and the right's still right. I'm just the way I look at it. <laughs> but one thing we need to understand is God has given us something the early generation before Pentecost didn't have. He gave us the spirit of truth, and he gave us the word, which is the truth. And when you put these two together, uh, we got a completeness there. And, and like I said, we have to learn to study. And I've seen some woolly boogers of things. And, and let, me, let me stretch you with some thoughts tonight. I me believe when we get to heaven, it's going to be by his grace and mercy. You seen my hand go up quick? The preachers had to pray through every day. <laughs> See, we got an amen even from the pastor. He knows what I'm talking about. You know, part of the reason that Moses did make in the promised land, how many knows why? He lost his temper and didn't, he was disobedient. Wonder, that's strange. He going to lead them in and didn't get to go into the promise of God, even though he was pursuing it. Because something fell out in his character. But yet when God picked him, he already knew he had a temper. And uh, But when we get talking these things, you get different remarks. Like I said, that's being legalistic. That's being religious. Well, maybe it's not being religious. Maybe it's being righteous. Maybe there's a such thing as righteous living. Maybe there is a such thing as a, a holy living. Maybe there is such a thing as holiness still in the Bible, and it says to perfect it. It wouldn't say to perfect it. And notice it said when you perfect it, uh, holiness in the, notice what it says, the fear of God. Now, how many can tell me what the fear of God is? It's the beginning of wisdom. Okay, so this all wraps together, and so you have these that says, well, I'm as righteous as I'm ever going to get because of the blood of Jesus. I believe that. But let, let me show you how to balance the, the word here. How many believe, like I said, you're going to be saved by grace? We're just not good enough. Any good any good enough people in here? Raise hands. I done figured when I get there, I said, I'm going to say, boy, it's been nothing but his mercy and grace. How many believe in grace in here? I do. I've come to 
understand grace more. Uh, pastoring a couple church when I was an evangelist, I just thought everybody was so perfect. Well, when I was blind. <laughs> then when I pastored it, pastor the church, I really found out what people could be like. And then I thought, well, if they're like that, I wonder what I'm really like and don't see it. And I begin to look at the mirror. But now let's look at the balance of all of this. Should we sin so the great can abound? Paul said, God forbid. Just because Jesus become our righteousness, should we stop living righteous living? God forbid that thought. So we've got these ideas that come into the body of Christ and, and we've departed from truth. Now Thessalonians tells us yeah, that if we don't love the truth, let me see if I can find it here. I had it marked. If we don't love the truth, that God was so strong. To, it didn't say the devil. We must receive the love for the truth of God. There's one thing to say you love the truth, but there's another thing to uh, receive the love of the truth. Everybody's, uh, if I ask you, how many love the Bible? They'll all raise your hands, but do you really love the truth? He said to buy the truth and sell it not. You have to receive the love of the truth. You've got to be committed that you want to walk through this thing and commit yourself that you're going to search the scriptures for in them you think you have salvation. So we must study the scriptures constantly lest we be deceived. See, we've got people now that, is, that are prophesying and giving all kind of doctrines. One particular uh, person that I knew, I heard their prophecies, and, and you would think, well, God was truly hitting some of it. Truly God was with them. And, and then I began to see an error. I said, how did I know there by the Bible? The next thing I know, uh, they said that God was calling them to the homosexuals. I thought, I can receive that. Somebody's got to go to them. Which one of y'all want to volunteer? Not me. I'm not perfected enough for that. The one I tried to pray through being, and the other one over there, Tula, uh, John Graham, you know, Brother John Graham, he was there praying, we praying, and, and the whole time we praying, we were honestly praying for this, brother, for deliverance. And he got up from there and told Brother John, said, John, I just couldn't uh, pray for thinking of you the whole time. Well, I just don't know how to receive that, you know. But the person, so it didn't throw me that they felt like in their heart they was being called. But the next thing they said was the Holy Ghost told me to go ahead and marry him, and I could win them doing that. And I thought about that statement. And uh, I'll come back up here in a second. We've got just a little bit more to get into what I want to show you uh, tonight. But, uh, and I thought about that statement. Then I listened again, and they made this statement. These are people prophesying. These are people preaching grace. These are preaching salvation. And then the and this poor girl said that, and she's poor because she's poor in her spirit. She's ignorant of the spirit. She said that Prince, anybody remember Prince? I boy, we all need to repent. We wasn't supposed to be listening to that. I'm going to get a few people to altar tonight for that. But said his music was anointed. And I'm scratching my head. I'm thinking, anointed with what? None of his music was anointed. It was demonic music. The man was a Jehovah Witness, didn't even believe Jesus was ever God. How could he have been anointed with anything that come from heaven? And it didn't bring joy and peace. It brought just the option. I thought, how far is this person? And how did he get in that state? If you don't receive the love of the truth, what is receiving the love of the truth? Willing to dig this word. Willing to love the truth. Oh, I'm going to get down 
deal with it now, willing to let the word change you, where it bites you in the face or not. You've got to be willing to apply. You can come to church all you want. And I know this man preaches some wonderful message. How many thinks he preached? I shouldn't ask that question. He preaches some wonderful messages. But if you don't apply them to your life, what good are they? You know, you've got to be a doer, not just to hear the word. You've got to rightly divide. You've got to, you've got to go through your thought process. You've got to go through your prayer process. When somebody tells me something, I take it to prayer if I don't understand it, and, and I dig at it. I don't jump up in the middle of the church and say, you're some kind of nut. Sometimes you feel like it. But I behave myself. My dad taught me to behave yourself. In any kind of church you went to. I believe that. Because there's something about going to church. There's supposed to be a reverence about coming in the house of God. It's not a place to cause a scene or have strife or backbiting in the middle of service. It's not a place to jump up and challenge your pastor. It's a place to learn about the Word of God. And if you don't love this truth and willing to... Uh, then it says that God will send you a strong delusion. I knew a man that was a prophet of God. He really was a prophet of God. William Brennan called him out and told the people he was a prophet of God. I knew this man. And at one time he walked with God in a great rim where he prayed for blind people. And they just get their sight just like that. I mean, he really had a, had a great vision during the a fast and and really, but somehow he lost that love for the truth, and, and God turned him over. So uh, he began to, he got tired of one wife, he prophesied the next one. He, he always picking a young one at that. And, and he got, I think he went through two or three that way. I, I, I give up on counting them because I stopped following him. When he started that stuff, I left him. Okay, I thought, well, he once had a great, uh, power in his life, but somehow he's lost it. Said, what has he lost? Turn with me to Ephesians here now. See if we can, we can, I've said all this to get to the same place. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. I said, there's a reason that people are not being healed in the church. You can go out on the street and pray for people and get them healed quicker than you can churches. There's a reason churches struggling. And we got instructions. This is the writing to the Ephesians church of the book of Ephesians. It's a book of fullness. It tells you thing able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that it has to thank according to the power that worketh within us. It's a book of fullness. But yet you get the past where he said he gave these gifts to man, which is the, the apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers. For for what reason? The perfecting of the saints, the working of the ministry, the editing, find the body, till we all come to the unity or our full statue. It's a book telling us that we can walk into the greatness of God and become one with God. Now, people have that a problem with that concept. But even Jesus prayed in the garden, Father, make them one as we are one. That's his last prayer. Okay? In the garden. Of Philippians says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The litmus test of it all is if he's got that mind, then he don't mind humbling himself as a servant. You know, lots of people want the greatness of God, but don't know how to humble themselves as a servant, but we get down into this fourth chapter, and it gets deep, and and I begin to read this, and it's around the 24th verse, the fourth chapter of Ephesians, if you're following me, that ye put on the new man, the new man, which after God is created, uh-oh, in righteousness and true holiness. Now, if you get reading this, there's nothing in this chapter. There's about 16 things there that tells you how you should dress. It says, why are you leaving it alone? Just whatever your pastor teaches you, if he teaches on that, 
that's fine with me. <laughs> I've got to learn to, if you go somewhere and this is, because they all have different things. Do you know you go to churches now, I'll take communion every uh, week? Don't fall out with that. If you don't do it here, that's fine, but don't fall out with them because they're doing it over there. That's personal conviction. Says, well, I don't know about all this stuff. And, and you get saying all this stuff and said, well, you can't save yourself with all this whole, wholeness. How many believe you can save yourself by works? Can, do you believe you can save yourself? Well, wait one minute now. I'm going to stretch you. Second chapter, Acts says, save yourself from these this untoward generation. Uh-oh. What about work out your own salvation with So our walk or our sanctification has everything to do with our salvation. It has everything to do with pursuing the promise. I can pray for you all day long as we turn blue and probably even tell you the symptoms and God wanting to heal you. But, you know, it, that's just God's promise. That's how he talks. He's always talking positive. But if you've got bitterness towards your, your husband or spouse, it's going to be a hard thing to get you healed. Let me tell you something. We can talk about all this all we want, but true wholeness has got to do with the character within your heart. It has to do with everything, the circumcision of your heart. In Moses' case, they wouldn't circumcise on the outside, but I'm going to tell you this is a generation that don't know anything about sanctification of the heart. They don't know anything. They don't believe it's necessary. But if it wasn't necessary, it wouldn't be in the Word. And I notice as we begin to read that, it says to put away lying. That's the first thing that says, anger and sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your ground. If you get angry, be done with it. These are the things that will steal your Holy Ghost victory. These are the things that will ruin the promise for you. These are the things just like Moses. He was angry and he lost his promise because he didn't know how to have self-discipline. It says, neither give place to the devil. Boy, that's a preacher lots of ways there. Let him that stole steal no more. Let me jump over to a few verses and I'll come back. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. Be put away from you with all malice. Be kind one to another, tender heart, forgiving one another, even as God forgive you. You want to know what true holiness is? Read the book. This is talking about true sanctification. One of the things that I noticed, and that's why I left it, there's two things that we need to talk about. The 29th verse, let no corrupt communication let no corrupt communication. The Bible says in one place, let your conversation be yay, yay, and nay, nay. What is corrupt communication? Nowadays, we got cell phones. Got mine up there, so I can't use it. Did you hear so-and-so about so-and-so? Did you hear about the preacher over there at so-and-so church? We defile the Holy Ghost. We don't know what true wholeness is. True wholeness is on the inside. It's got to do with the character on the inside. It does magnify and come out on the outside. I know the old timers went a little far with it. Some of it wouldn't be so bad. They used to work so hard on them one-eyed devils. It'd almost be good for some of us to get rid of our one-eyed devils. Worse than that, we got one we carry in the pocket now, and you can get any old thing you want to get on if you want to. Do you know that, that there's a problem with preachers in America? I was just over to Colorado, and, and Pastor Charles was telling me 60% problem with the people that uh, uh, they deal with over there. His wife works on Focus on the Family, and they was talking about this. 60% problem with Christians looking at Pornography. We can shout and dance all we want. But if we're corrupt on the inside, we're corrupt on the outside. Jesus said, it's out of your heart. 
your mouth speaketh. It's the issues of the heart that's blocking God from doing so much in the church. You know, sometimes we're hung uh, with things in our life, and God can't, uh, he can't perform this promise in our life. Sometimes there's something that's holding us back in, until we get honest in our heart and begin to search our heart and begin to read this book and begin to apply these things again. Corrupt communication, though. That's the thing I've been working on. We had a, a great Holy Ghost knockdown in Stantonville, Tennessee, and then 30 minutes after the service, I was still with the pastor there, and he was telling me about every pastor in the area. And I was trying myself to get away from him. Until we control our communications, until we control this, if we don't learn to bridle our tongue, our religion is in vain. We've got to learn that we can miss the promise because the, <coughs> the holiness that's on the inside of us, we've got to get back to personal sanctification. The Lord began to tell me to separate himself from People that slander and gossip and backbite. And I, when I begin to practice, and you know, when you have something in your life that you have to change, well, lots of times you've done made a habit of something bad. And boy, it takes a while to change. You've been around, brother, I, may, I'm, I will get you in hot water with me, around preachers and begin to hear them talk about this preacher and that preacher. So I decided in my mind to change it. Decided, Lord, there's something about me that you're not happy with. And it's being pulled in these bad situations. And sometimes just sitting there nodding, not saying anything, we're agreeing with it. So I decided I would, I made up my mind, I repented in my heart. And I said, I'm going to change God. See, he that has clean hands and a pure heart is going to sin. I don't know if you want to sin. I don't know if you want to, if you like church the way it is, but I'm looking for a church like the book of Acts. I'm reaching for the gold. I'm not reaching for the silver. I'm reaching for something God says we can possess. I'm reaching for something where the Holy Ghost just sweeps in and the people run to the altar and we baptize them left and right. I believe we can have the same move in the book of Acts. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not changed one bit. The only thing that's changed is we've changed our concepts. We've changed the way we look at things. And what we used to call uh, wrong, we call it right now. What what we used to not do, we do. And, it, and, and we've got to get back to personal wholeness. And we've got to get back. And it's got to start from the inside. And like I said, I made my mind up that I was going to change some of this. And the first thing I did was... I got out. We have a flea market where we're at, and uh, and these things happen to me. My wife says, "You're a strange fellow. I can't help this way." God, uh, I got up this morning, called my son, and I guarantee he's watched. We can get him on the phone. I said, "Son, I'm going to tell you, better be careful with your speeding, because I see you getting a speeding ticket just as sure as the world." Did you see me getting that this morning? Yes, sir. I said, "I guarantee he was careful." He better be reminded because I see these things. And I got out of the car and, and I seen this man's face. And the Lord says, you need to pray for him. This is what's wrong with him before I see him. And I said, I will, Lord. And I'll go around the corner and run into the man. Well, I used to be at Olivet Pentecostal Church. And it didn't turn out the way I thought it should. But it doesn't make no difference. you got to get the place where all fit, hurt, all that. You can just forgive like Jesus forgive. It doesn't make no difference. It doesn't make no difference. And the and, and, uh, first thing he wanted to do after the Lord was start to talk about Olivet Pentecost Church. And I'm trying to get away from it. So I done decided I wasn't going to get into all this. And I'm trying to get away from him. I'm trying to get away from him. Trying He'd keep pulling me in. And I finally get away from him. And I said, ooh, that felt so dirty feeling. You ever been around somebody talking about somebody that felt dirty? You know, this stuff destroys churches, gossip and slander, and it destroys the unity of the church. 
Mama said if you can't, and then this ain't in the Bible, but it's in her Bible. If you can't say something good, don't say nothing at all. And I got away from it, and I thought, sure, I'm so glad to be away from that. And I got about 20 feet from him, and the Lord spoke to me and said, did I not tell you to pray for him? Oh, God. Oh, God. But I was feeling so dirty, God. I wanted to get away from the situation. It was, I was being pulled in. And you know, I told you, it's going to try to stop being pulled into them things and repented of it, trying to, you know, repentance means to change direction and change minds. It's not just cry about it and say, well, one of these days I'll do better. This means to change directions. And, and the Lord said, I didn't I tell you? I heard that again. I said, I'm in trouble. I said, oh, God, forgive me. Just please forgive me. But if you put him in my path, this is a big flea market again. I'll do it. I went around, the, down the end and around the corner, and there he is. And guess what he wants to talk about again? You know what I told him? I ain't going to call this name. I says, brother, you know I love you. He, and most of them people at Olivet, they still love me, and well, I love you too, Brother Compton. I says, let's make it a rule when me and you see each other. Let's don't talk about all of that that went on there. I says, not good for me or you either one. He says, oh, Brother Compton, you're so right. And guess what I got to do? Pray for him. There's a point I'm trying to make. We have to break these old habits. We have to get back into personal sanctification. We got to get back into working out our own salvation. There's a reason we're not touching God like we. There's a reason that we're not. This is for, for me. When a preacher preaches, he preaches to his own self. The Lord began to talk to me. I got into another place trying to help a preacher who has failed from his pulpit. I thought that's what we do. When saints fall, we go run and pick them up. But if a preacher falls, we just squash them down. He deserved it. We'll tell it in five counties, won't we? Get on the phone and tell it. But the Bible tells me if you're spiritual to restore such a one. And so I'm there trying to help this man. He was actually a great preacher. I'm not a preacher. I'm a talker. I've been here some times. You know I don't preach like Brother Brad. He can preach the circles around me. That's not my call. That's all right. I'm sure I don't threaten him. He don't threaten me. That's fine. That's how God made us. But this man could preach. And he built this beautiful church, over a million dollar church, and was packed full of 400. Thing his wife took sick for 12 or 13 years, had disease, and, and she finally died. And not only was he heartbroken, the whole church was heartbroken. I can understand it. I went and helped them for six weeks on Wednesday night. I told him, I called him, I said, I know you're depressed on through. I said, I'll come over there and and he does Bible study and reads that and says, I don't want to offer it. That's what I did. He needed help. He didn't need somebody to be a, a leech on him. And, and so I went and preached to him. And, but he was so, he just couldn't pull out his depression. And, and he got worse and he made some bad decisions. And the church called him in the board and, and they let him go. And that just deepened his wound. And he, like I said, he made a bad decision. He finally owned his bad decision. When you finally own your sins, there's help for you. You sitting there making an excuse for your sin? Well, you know, brother so-and-so is so-and-so. Don't do the you bit of good. When you finally own your sin and willing to confess it to God, now God's ready to help you. And he finally come to that place. I didn't run him down. I just talked to him every once in a while. I just tell him I was praying for him. You know, trying to tell him I still loved him and I'm praying for him. And so I met with him a couple of times, and so we was in Wendy's eating, and sure enough, here come a preacher friend of ours, and he done been down the uh, across the river preaching at another church. And first thing he says, I went there to preach, and I didn't like this, and I didn't like that. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, I said, I'm not any better than you and ain't trying to be better. So let's just pray for that church instead of talking about it. See, we have to change. We've got to 
get back to true wholeness. Like I said, we preach wholeness every kind of way. You've heard it. But true wholeness is about the inside. It's about doing it. I want you to understand the concept of this. We're a people that's been blessed with the Holy Ghost in power. He told Noah to pitch the outside the ark and the inside of the ark. And see, true wholeness about pitching the inside of you. And if you don't pitch the inside, if you don't correct the inside or the things that you're used to doing, what it does is nullify the promises of God. What it does, it nullifies the power that you can move in. It nullifies the level that you can move in. It nullifies these things. And, and you know, we had all kind of churches all across the United States, and some of them are, are real great churches and some are not. But I've been to some of the power of God. It's just unbelievable in places. And yet if you, there you find out if, there's such a war going on in the, with the members. Why is it? I don't know why I'm preaching like this tonight. When we have a problem with one another, it seems to deepen us and spreads us apart more than pulls us together because we're not coming back to what it says, the true holiness. I heard Bishop Johnson, and I'm fixing to quit. I know it's Wednesday night, but I never joined the, you know who the ALJC was. I never joined him. It was a small United Pentecost. I went to Bishop Johnson. He run it for 18 years. And the biggest thing they ever fought about was outside holiness. One preacher said it's the sleeves had to be this long. The other one said here, and this one said that. And, and they would get into knock down, drag out. Preachers. Almost into a fist fight. I'm telling you the truth. And they worried me to death because I would go out to the Western District. They couldn't find anybody to preach. And we had an uh, RV, and we'd go out there to preach. And it's lots of times just eight or ten people at the churches. They worried me death to join that organization. So I went in there to talk to him. He said, I don't think this is the thing for you, Brother Compton. That's why I learned all this. But I never met a man like him. You know, when you're in an argument with three or four folks, whoever you agree with, the other side, not going to like you, are you? And I mean, they would get very angry with one another. And some of them fall out with him real bad. And he could carry that on his shoulder on Monday. And Tuesday, you wouldn't even know it. He had learned to let loose. He had really learned how to live wholeness. He had learned how to uh, forgive. He had learned how to control his, his tongue. I, I, like I said, I'm trying to quit in these things, these actual things that come to mind. Uh, I don't guess any of y'all ever heard of or knew H. Richard Hall. Nobody in here. You never met Brother Hall? The man was truly a prophet of God. When you went to his tent meetings, they come out of wheelchairs to death, heard uh, unbelievable how the dead was raised. Unbelievable. And he had a non-denominational group, had 16,000 members in it. When he died, he had 16,000 preachers members in it. And they was of different Pentecostal faith. Can you imagine that? That could have been onesies, twosies, and threesies. There. But he had a rule is we don't argue about things here. And he's another one that learned to bridle his tongue. He told me one day he was preaching. He said, you know Billy Graham? Uh-oh, I done upset some of you already. He was a great prophet of God. I thought, that's a strange thing for a Pentecostal. The rest of them are putting him down. And Brother Hall saying he's a great prophet of God. And I thought I would pray about that. And what was he saying? He wasn't speaking evil. He was speaking something good. And then I thought, do you know the early part of Billy Graham's ministry? Just I think he was a farmer, wouldn't he? Come off of a farm or something like that. He led more people to Christ, repentance, than anybody that last part in America. 
He led more people. Repentance is the beginning of salvation. And I got thinking, I get it, I get it, I get what he said. All John Baptist said was repent, repent, repent. And he called it, there never been such a great prophet. So he learned how to control his mouth. He learned how to speak good. He said, I asked him, I said, you ever have any trouble with preachers? He said, I have it all the time. They, You know, there's jealousy in some of them. I said, well, you do. He said, I pray and even fast. And said, one in this area you're in right now, give me trouble, come down the tent, want it to start trouble. And the... And, uh, said, what you do? It went on a 21-day fast so his church could have revival. They had revival. He put, he just didn't talk about good words. It says, do good to them that despitefully use you. You want to know about true wholeness? When people get in your face and act ugly, love them anyway and do good to them. When people want to talk to you, just like the, I had one of the other people at Olivet that come saying they're still talking about you, Brother Compton. I said, that's all right. They're just giving somebody else a rest. That's all right. That's right. Don't get blowed out. Don't get into throwing stones at one another. Go read this yourself. This It says, righteousness and true holiness. That's self-sanctification is what it, what it is. And these are the things that, like it says, that will hinder growth. They will stop the promise. I, I need to quit, but I, I got so much in my craw. I, I, I I just comes, comes up uh, when I get telling. These are actual experience. My wife says, you tell to me. First time I ever went to Argentina with Brother Charles Johnson, he asked me to go, and I didn't know what I was in for. We had 230-something people get the Holy Ghost that week. Boy, I was on cloud nine. What are you talking about? And they, and they had a you, – you can tell I'm very country in my dialects for country if you hadn't told it now. And and so you got to go through a translator. Have you ever preached in a foreign or translating some of this southern dialect or something? <laughs> I told him, I said, there's people, and before I could get it out, he's translating. That's what I was trying to do. There's people that's lost their ear, and if you'll get in the line, God's going to open your ears. I just bowed, and he didn't just believe God was going to do it. And then about 160 some people line up at one time. And, and Brother Charles and the bishop there, they was just kind of ribbing me about it. Said, boy, you've done really done it. Said, and so they left me there with a translator, and they went on to eat. In the first two or three I prayed for, they was it. They'd done lost their hearing, and nothing happened. You believe this gospel? I, I believe every bit of it. I believe every bit of it. I believe the deaf can hear, and I believe the dead can be raised. I believe cancers can be cured. First miracle I ever seen was a cancer, 15-year-old girl with with pancreas cancer, and God dried that cancer up, and she's still alive and got kids. But the first two, three people I prayed, never nothing happened. And all of a sudden, I felt the Lord. The Lord will get you out of your spots. <laughs> And he come down, and as he come down, zip, he goes down through them line and them people, and I'm not even touched them, and they all get it at one time, and then it backs up and gets the one on the front, and about 10 minutes later, I walked in the house and said, what happened to you? You give it up. I said, I, yeah, I give it up because God took it, and it all happened. It didn't start ringing the phone down there and says, what's going on? And anyway, I left out of that meeting and seeing the, I mean, even the weathered hand just like this, and a cane on that thing, and it just straightened out. There's nothing to see that in foreign countries. said, why not here? Because we're spoiled Americans. We want what we want, and we got attitudes that don't line up the true wholeness, and we cause so much trouble in our own churches. We cause the pastor's trouble, the other church trouble. Nobody can get along with, with us because we're hard to deal with. 
You know why there's many of the afflictions of the righteous? Because we got many attitudes in the righteous. If I don't believe God will whip you with sickness, then you better go read the 119th Psalm, the longest book in the whole Bible, and David talking about his infirmity and how God allowed it. And go read that chapter and look at what it says and what he learned through it. Underline the same words and count them, says. And then go look them words up and see what they mean. And I come home. I promised my family, family time. I'm telling you this for a reason. Just seeing the part of God moved so greatly. Was so honored that God would do these things. Like I said, I was here. And while I'm down in Florida, I don't believe I'm in the place they're going to fall out with me going to Epcot and Disney World. Say that in some places, if don't come back. I'm being accused in Arkansas by a preacher for doing something over in Arkansas, and I'm in Florida. Have you ever noticed that when you have problems, if you have problems, uh, I'm trying to make just good common sense to not with total strangers, it don't bother you very much. But it, let it be somebody that you got a high regards or family. Well, they can get your goat quicker than anything your family can, can't they? But hurt your feelings the most, can't they? Well, anyway, this preacher I'd put way up here. And that's wrong. We need to stop putting preachers right there and leave them where we are. And they, to be honest with you, that was just lies told. And I couldn't believe how in the world could lies be told on me. And I'm, I'm here and I'm over there too. And do you know, I let that thing get in my spirit. And it rolled in my spirit and I wouldn't turn loose of it in my spirit. spirit and what happened, it began to become bitterness and that offense did. And, and I began to have pancreatitis. My color even began to change. And I was going to home prayer meetings and people coming and prophesying to me my condition and praying for me. And and I, I promise you I'm going to get through with this. We've been about almost 45 minutes now. but And I got down on my knees and said, God, I've had enough prayer to heal me. And said, what is hindering that promise? Healing is the children's bread. But like I said, you can pursue something, and, and lots of us pursue it so much, but we never get it, not realizing the, the fault's not in God. He means what he says, and he wants to do what he says in his word. By stripes we are healed. But lots of people, they repeat that, and they die in their deathbed. And you say, why? I don't have all the perfect answers, but I've seen people... Uh, go to their deathbed and the Lord would reveal something that had to do with salvation that I had to deal with. It was mad at a preacher. From, I, I Make the family mad. I'd rather make the family mad and that person get peace in their heart before they leave this earth. And, and I was down saying, God, I've had enough prayer to heal me and it, all these people has discerned it. and They've got gifts and why hadn't you healed me? You ever done God like that? Why didn't you give me what I was believing you for? I'm hoping I'm making good common sense to you tonight. And this is what the Lord said to me. He says, but have you forgive like I forgave? We so many times on this bitterness say we forgive, but the minute we see that person, you can tell if you forgive it rares up on the inside. Let me to tell you, I'm trying to tell you about true sanctification and wholeness tonight. We preached it just the wrong way on the outside, but on the inside we're corrupt. We got bitterness and says we can still speak in tongues. Don't surprise me one bit because we got used to speaking in tongues. But let me tell you something. You don't have love. It don't profit you anything. And you know something? I begin to think what the scripture head says, and I says, Lord, I forgive, and, and I begin to bless the person. 
Do you know in two days' time all my symptoms had left me? God was wanting to heal me the whole time, but I had something in my heart. There's lots of people sitting on the pews tonight that you're holding things. Some of you mad at God. I'm going to come to you. Some of you angry at God, and you might as well tell him you're angry. He knows it. Some of you blaming God for something, but God's not done nobody bad in this place. The problem with God is, is none at all. He's not even broke a sweat. He's still the same yesterday, day, forever. He still has all power in heaven and earth, and he can heal you in an instant. But lots of times we don't understand that there's something within our heart that hinders the promise. If you're going to pursue the promise, You're going to have to deal with your heart. I probably said it the last time I was here. The day you seek him with a whole heart. I got the preacher thinking that's good. He'll grab it and preach some on it. Jeremiah, over there, 29th chapter. Anybody know that I know the plans I have for you? Anybody heard that? Seen it on Bibles? But a few verses from that says, The day you seek him with your whole heart, You'll find him. He's not very far, is he? But what is it in your heart? Then why are you preaching like this? God's three times told me that I could reach something that it seems like I get a little hold of it and it slips out of my hand. Somebody's going to reach this book of Acts ministry. And some church is going to get hold of the, just like the book of Acts. If Jesus done it in the book of Acts, wouldn't it be a, a and I don't want to call it a problem, but suddenly it would fill so much up and suddenly you couldn't stand them all and 5,000 was added to the church. Is he the same? Well, it's a different name. He's not a different God. Somebody's going to be hungry, and somebody's going to hear, and somebody's going to grab hold, and somebody's going to enter into the holy place. Somebody's going to grab hold of what the church is really supposed to be like. Somebody's going to grab hold of the supernatural, of the normal thing it should be going on in under service. And somebody's going to understand what really went on in the early church and going to reach into that place, and it ain't going to be a mega church so that we can just tickle people's ears. It's going to be a mega church demonstration and power. And I'm going to tell you, before the coming of the Lord, God's going to have a church that's going to kick the devil's teeth right in. And, and it has to do with coming back to some of the old principles, coming back to true wholeness, coming back to a prayer life, coming back to fasting, coming back to simple kindness, loving one another, loving one another. True wholeness. Read this. Please read this. Because like I said, the, the reason the Lord spoke to that to me for my own self is this is what's holding you up. You're not watching your communication. Trying to quit. There's a lady down there near Netherlands, Texas. She's very prophetical, very detailed, very powerful light lady, a lady. I don't believe in ladies preachers. It's almost scary. She's, you know what she said four years ago? The Lord told her she would watch her conversation. She could come into a higher place. If we watch her conversation. We watch what we say about not just the pastor. I know we always say, get on the pastor, but it's not the uh, known it and do my prophets no harm. I see that people all the time write that in the first thing. I said, oh, Lordy. But if we learn how to love one another like Jesus loved one another, we learn how to treat one another like Jesus. We learn how to treat one another like 
we like to be doing to others as do unto you. How do you treat yourself? You eat good things when you're ready to eat them? Yes. Me too. I'll drive out my way to get a good piece of catfish when I get catfish hungry. I spoil myself. When I get ready for steak, I know some good steak places. If we treat people like we treat ourselves, we're fulfilling the law of love. And see, faith worketh by love. And the reason we don't have much faith in some places is not much love in some places. This may be my last time here. The, your pastor may throw me out because I'm preaching tonight. You want a tickling service? Your service, or do you want the truth that will grow you? I'm giving you some things to think about to stretch you, to cause you to grow. God says we can reach that place. Did you see the thing? I don't know if you've seen it. That I, somebody passed it me, and I had to check it out. I don't post just things I can't check out on post. Did you see where they're soccer? Why they where they're sacrificing or dedicating the that third temple altar? That's unreal, isn't it? When I was over there, they said that uh, everything is ready. I seen some of it. They wouldn't let us take a picture of it. I seen the the lamp stands. Beautiful. He says, what does that mean? Two things. Jesus is getting ready to come back. And the other thing is he's fixed and get ready to raise a church. He's not coming for a church as high, powerful. He's coming to a church that's full of power and full of love, just like he is standing to your feet. I know I rambled here and there and tried to stay with my notes here and there. I hope I said enough to make you, to stretch you about true holiness. Go read this yourself. I dare you to read it. I said, I heard all the things raised up. Couldn't do this, couldn't do that, and all the wars we had about all that. But I never heard them talk about the inside. And it has everything to do with true wholeness, true sanctification. And I don't know who's in here tonight to be honest with God. But I'm going to make a different type of altar call tonight. I know we're getting late now. Y'all getting ready to go home. Don't come out till I name the things on my heart. That way nobody can identify you in one particular thing. But you got unforgiveness, anger issues. You're doing things as you shouldn't do. I didn't really get on grieving the Holy Ghost, and that gets deeper because the Lord told me about how people grieve the Holy Ghost. Boy, it was deeper than I thought. But if you got them things tonight and you'd like to get rid of them and you're ready to make a change, I'm going to invite you to just come stand here. Tonight, I know I'm preaching to the choir. These are the ones that are the most faithful that are here tonight. But there's, some of you got issues in your heart that God wants to start a process. It don't mean you're a horrible person or a mean person. But who will come tonight? I don't know. Who will come? Who will come? If you be honest with God, God will help you. I've seen people have anger issues because they had bitterness inside Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to give you just a second. Because God's going to do something here tonight. It's going to be deeper. We may have more healings in this place tonight. Some people see A.A. Allen and the works he done, but lots of people didn't realize in the day that Shambach and all them had another tent and they preached out of it and they preached to people about the condition of their heart. No wonder they had great healings. Miracles there. They preach real repentance. Not one bit of, I'm putting you down, you heard my own testimony. I'm drawing the line. I'm making some changes. I'm not being pulled in that no more. God said to pull. He that knows to good, do good and do it not as to him it is. 
sin. Thank you, Jesus. One more call. If you want to come, come right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is not what I wanted to hear. This is what the Lord spoke to me coming down the road to preach about true holiness and righteousness. Because it's out of our heart, our issues. The book of Proverbs says, our hardest issues of life. Raise your hands, everyone. Talk to the Lord. We're going to pray a general prayer, but I want you to pray with God. And, and whatever it is, I want you to talk to him. Says God, I bring it to you tonight, and I'm going to leave it at this altar with you. And tonight, we're going to make a change. Now, if it's bitterness, don't be surprised. You run into the, problem, the person that you're bitter about. The test will be when you see them, can you hug their, uh-oh, I shouldn't have said that. Hug their neck. Can you, have you really forgive like God? Father, in the name of Jesus, I take all of this as we begin to speak and their confessions from their minds and their hearts tonight, Lord Jesus, and we wind it up and we send it to the pit of hell where it come from begin with. And God, we release. You said they'd know the truth, and the truth would set them free. And tonight, people are being delivered and set free. God, without me even touching people, anxiety, panic attacks, bad dreams, all of this is, is being broke off of people right now. Depression. I see depression in some of your eyes. It's being broke right now in the name of Jesus by your confession that, Lord, forgive me. I own my sin. I own this thing. And, God, I speak to you, God. And, God, I need help to walk past it. That's what I told him. I need help, God, to break old habits. And, God, I speak by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Release healing upon each one of them right now. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you. Let loose of it don't make no difference no more. It don't make no difference. That's what I think. It don't make no difference. It's behind. In Jesus' precious, precious name. Thank you, Jesus. Stand there and pray just one second. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight's a new night for you. Tonight's a new beginning. Tonight, God is touching you and he's doing something. Thank you, Jesus. Come, come. Don't go run that way. Come, come, come. We might ought to have somebody get behind some of these people. Thank you, Jesus. God's doing something. The anointing is touching you. It's touching you to the top of the head to the bottom of your feet. And this and this illness, these things in your body that you've been carrying from some time. In fact, you've been carrying. It, it's like you went through it with a spirit of infirmity. This would go wrong. That would go wrong. This would go wrong. You'd get past this, and then you'd have to deal all this is being broke once forever in your body in Jesus' name. God is, is breaking words that's been spoke around you, almost like curses. People have said things, and them things hurt you very deeply. And God is breaking that, them curses off of you tonight, and he's setting you free of things in Jesus' name. Mama kati ala da kotate al shanda koti ki ala la taka shanda. Mama kata. Thank you, Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? People can say words and they become like curses to you. You had some of that, but God stowed all them words down and you have released all of it tonight. And tonight there's a new beginning for you in Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to get past all this hurt. It's amazing. Sometimes your best friend can even hurt you, how people can hurt you. But all this wounding, you know, he come to heal the brokenhearted. 
He's, he's healing a broken heart. He's healing some things, misunderstandings. He's, he's making a change in your life. This, this night, this night, you come up here with an honest heart saying, I don't want to own this no more. I'm giving it to you. That's what you told the Lord. Every spirit that has bound you and oppressed you is being broke right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Healing is coming to your body right now. Down in your legs and in your feet and even in your knees and in your back, I see the healing power of Jesus wanting to work. And even in your hands, a weakness in your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Let him come to and I'll tell him what I've seen. Mama, kata, kea, lala, toko, shanda. This can be so simple for deliverance. It really is. But he said, you know the truth. The truth will set you free. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This touched you deep inside. And sometimes we just hold on and hold on, don't we? We're all guilty. If we start trying to say this one's going to make it and that one, this one, ain't none of us going to make it without his help. Ain't none of us. Thank you, Jesus, but this day, I'm telling you, I see a cleansing, a cleansing rain coming upon you right now. It's coming upon you right now. That's the Holy Ghost that you're beginning to feel right there coming upon you right now. He's cleansing you from the top of your head. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's, he's fixing something that you hadn't been able to fix or let loose of for a long time. Tonight, he's fixing it. He said, then tell you so. In Jesus, Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All of this pressure that I feel, all the stress I feel, all the panic, anxiety, all the everything that I feel that the enemy wants to sometimes throw on you it's being bundled up in a little ball and sent back to hell tonight in Jesus name all this nervous stomach that I see just let the Lord do it for you in Jesus in Jesus precious name thank you come back to you thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I pray where you have any problems or not, I pray in your back, in your back. Also, right in here sometimes, that acid problem that you have. You know, I'm telling you the truth. I just cause this to be stopped, the acid balanced in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I pray in your feet. It don't make any sense, but it's like a neuropathy or so, almost a burning or a tingling even in your toes. You know what I'm talking about? I pray there in the name of Jesus, let healing come forth in Jesus, in Jesus' name. I don't know who you are, who you are. you like the rest of us. We're just imperfect people. That That's all right. God likes imperfect people. He can't stand the self-righteous. That's what he can't. The high and mighty, he knows them afar off, but us that will humble ourselves, here I am, God. You ever had to do that? Here I am again. Stupid me. God, you're touching him. And God, he's not always been well received in places. He's been a misunderstood a whole lot. Thank you, Jesus. There's times you've tried to talk to him and he's tried to convey it and it was just all, just when it, he tried to convey it, it was so just come out and, and people just twisted it and, and they didn't receive that, that you give him to speak. And God, let him, let him feel your love. Right now, in Jesus' precious name, in Jesus' precious name, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands up. Lord, you're touching her, touching her body, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. You let loose of it. You let loose of it. You've had a hard time of it every time. You're trying to do better. The devil always played that old film in your mind, but this is the day that it's laid here and it's not coming back. 
is broke, is broke, is broke. It has no effect no more on you or your life. This is the day that you're getting past all of it. In Jesus' name, there's a balance or hormones going on right now as I touch you. In Jesus' name, there's a balance of emotion. I don't understand this, but I almost see like emotions raise this way and then they go this way sometimes. God says, I'm going to balance your emotions and you're going to see my power into that. In Jesus' name, every chemical that's being balanced in her body right now, in Jesus' precious name, in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Touch him, Lord. Touch him, Lord. I speak God a sharpness of his mind again. I break the cloudiness that I see on his mind. I break the God, even memory loss that would try to come into his mind. And I speak into the circulation of his body, into the clotted arteries, God. You know what this is all about. And I speak, Lord Jesus, right now, restoring of health in his body right now. Thank you, Jesus. I speak into the hearing, sharpness of the hearing. Come back into his ears right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody standing right here. It's in your uh, taste. Things don't taste right in your, in your mouth. Who is it? Quickly, quickly. Things don't taste right or they taste met uh, metallic or just taste strange or your smell and taste both. God, we speak to the smell and the taste. In Jesus' name, God. Speak, we speak, and we loosen the miracle, the angel. There was an angel up on the platform. It's what I seen on the right of you when you was up there. I seen it so quickly, and I said, my goodness. You know, we don't have to all jump and shout. God send them. But let this angel bring down his miracle from heaven. I release it in Jesus, in Jesus' name. You, you play the... Uh, Music. Do you play the keyboard? You played the keyboard. I recognize who you are now. That's a great gift. Stick your hands out here. The feeling in his hands, in Jesus' name, especially around in this area right here. Don't make any sense. Satan, you get your uh, on your hands off his hands. Because he's anointed to play this piano. And you cannot disable his hands. Corporal Tundra go. Feeling totally in his fingers. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I wish we... Anybody got any uh, different type of perfume right fast? Anybody with them? We'll just try a sin out right now. Right now. Somebody's got something we can try. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody. Thank you. Just what is it you can't taste real good? Do you remember what certain things are? Huh? I dare you to go home and find them certain things. Can you smell that? A little bit. That's all I can do. Who's got something a little stronger? Thank you, Jesus. We've got something a little stronger here. Thank you, Jesus. I'll prove to you that God has done this thing right here, right? Thank you, Jesus. Now, I pray also for your hearing. It's like, not that he's going deaf, but it's like some of the frequencies have been leaving your ears, and they're not, none of them going to leave all frequencies here in Jesus' name. Jesus' name and Jesus' name. You play by ear anyway. That's how you, like, the only way you can describe that is you just know what to touch when it sounds like it. That's the only way I can tell you how it's done. I can't play by music one bit no more. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Go home and do you, uh, you, you as, you as wife or what? 
He's your brother. Do you know what it is that he can't, eats it? This he can't taste good. It's gonna get right, and the smell's gonna get so right you're gonna smell things all through the house before you're gonna know it. You're gonna know perfume when people walk in the house. You're gonna smell it. Just watch what God's done for you. Don't don't have to be jumping shout in Jesus' name. Blurring this in the eyes. Blurring this in the eyes. Thank you, Jesus. I pray right in these shoulders even. New rotator cups. New rotator cups. In Jesus' name. You too? New rotator cups. Why the angels here? New rotator cup. <laughs> New knee joints. We just had a vision. I had a vision. I was going over at Camden while I was praying, and a man that had, he had had two, you know, knees put in, and I had a vision of this man before I got in. I had the, I'm learning to wait on the Holy Ghost. That's what we're missing, the moving of the water. Get underneath the mulberry tree and wait till he moves. And, and I seen it, and I seen the man. I thought, boy, I just want to do this right now, but that's not what God said. And when the spirit moved, we got to it. And when I got over there talking to him, you, his leg muscles and everything begin to move all by itself. You can see his legs. And I thought, what in the world's going on, God? You always hit me. And, and then it quit, and I knew it was done. I said, what is it you ain't been able to do? He says, kneel for seven years. I said, kneel, because you can do it. He hit the floor, and when he realized he could kneel, he and Bill pray on his knees. That sounds strange, but when you're used to praying and you won't get down on your knees and you can't do it, that's you missing something. And when he realized he took off running, he hollered, I ain't been a run for seven years, too. And then he hit the altar. That quick. That's that quick. God's doing miracles in here right now. Receive them. Receive them. In Jesus' name, receive them. Receive them. Receive them. Receive new knees. Knees. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Move your arm. Move your arm. See if there's a difference. How does it feel? Better, worse, same? Feels good. Did you come in with any pain in your knees or your... Well, I understand that. I got what I'm believing God for, still believing. <laughs> it's good one day, next thing. You know what I keep saying? Thank you, Jesus, for growing cartridge in my knees. Thank you, Jesus. He's doing it. Healing is... Here's where we get it wrong. We pray, or he prays for you, and you come in in pain, your pain leaves, and healing has thing. And then you get up next day and says, well, it's trying to come back. My God must not have done it. No, 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 no. You hold on. It says, well, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Recovery is a process. So each day we get up. And when you, before you get up, well, I'm going to get up with so much pain. Well, you done started off wrong already. I'm thanking God that I'm not going to get up with pain. I'm thanking God that I can walk today. And I'm thanking God that I'm going to walk better the next day. In Jesus, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm trying to quit. It's done got 15 minutes to nine. Y'all ready to go home, aren't you? And I ready to go home. Eyes, eyes, eyes. Blurriness in eyes, blurriness in eyes, stigmatism in eyes, stigmatism. Quickly, quickly, lift your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, come quickly if you just need a touch or, or receive it by the spoken word. You can receive stigmatism. You wear glasses. You got contact in Jesus' name. Stigmatism, go. Go. Don't be surprised you can't wear the contacts because it gets blurry. Don't get upset. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, you wear glasses. You don't want to wear them. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. That you can't see things up close. Is that where? Thank you, Jesus. So it gives you a problem reading your Bible. Thank you, Jesus. Get your regular Bible. You got one at home, I'm for sure. 
Take it out of your drawer there in the bedroom. <laughs> in Jesus' name. And read it. Read it. And each day you read it, your eyes are going to get better. And if anything tries to come against it, you know what I do now to the place that my eyes are 99%. Every once in a while it tries to hit. But I can read it. I can read it. I can read it. My wife said, that's amazing. Nothing's amazing if thou can believe. She says, well, because you're a preacher and you, you're so good. No, it's not. Because I believe. I believe. Who else is stigmatism? Stigmatism. Stigmatism. In Jesus' name. God, we pray the impossible eyeglasses come off on all of them. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Let them take it by faith. Let them take it by faith. In Jesus' name. I keep sensing I may already touch almost a, a almost a cataract. Cataract. Is there a cataract in here? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Somebody get behind her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me. Somebody get all the way behind her. A couple of you get all the way behind. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The power of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The weakness that she's feeling from the power of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We just speak bye-bye. Bye-bye right now. Bye-bye. Woo. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Which eye is it, that the cataract? Which eye? Can you tell the difference when you're trying to read because of... Thank you, Jesus. God, take the cataract, dissolve it from his eyes. Dissolve the cataract from his eyes in Jesus' name. Now, God, as I remove my hand off of his eyes, God, let his eyes now suddenly become brighter from the cataracts. Take a good look. Take a good look. Tell us the truth on the truth to set you free and see if your eyes have got brighter. Thank you, Jesus. They've got a little brighter. Totally brighter. Cataracts dissolved. The process begun. In Jesus' name. Do you can't read anything? You can't read your Bible either or anything. Just pick it up and read it. Pick it up and read it. I'm telling you, pick it up and read it. You'll read it in Jesus' name. In Jesus, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Cataract. Thank you, Jesus. Believe the Lord to do this? Do you believe he'll do it for you? Okay. Got to have the right answer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we dissolve every cataract. We dissolve every cataract in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Go, go, go. Take a look. You can shut the other eye if you want to. Put your hand over the eye. See if it's got a little brighter. You can't really... But I believe it has got brother, though. Look look at it right now. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just might as well get it all. You said get it. Just get it. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, hearing? Have a hard time hearing? Thank you, Jesus. Go from him. Go from him, in Jesus' name. The ring and go. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. While we're praying for ears, anybody lost your hearing just about altogether in one of your ears? Come, come quickly. You, he, you lost it altogether? He made, he made you lose it altogether, raising him, didn't you? <laughs> no, it's skill, though. I know that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Which one is it? This one. You can't hardly hear. Can I ask you? Open loud and clear in the name of Jesus. Every nerve damage, every nerve damage be healed right now. 
be healed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. He's going to hold on to this. The devil ain't going to steal it from him. In Jesus, in Jesus' name. Take your finger in the other. The, they, that's right. Won't do no good pity, didn't that? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Can you hear me? I hear you. What, is it better or worse? Or? It's, better. it's better in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, by the way, them spots in my eyes are gone. They went on and going. Can I? You know, of course, I'm sure y'all heard the oil that flows over there at Dalton. And I was listening to a man, and he was talking about how he had a hernia come up in his body and said that's before the oil. And he, he prayed and said it was a year. He kept laying his hands and praying for himself and just believing God and said it went away. Well, that's a miracle, hernia to go without things. So he went over there where the oil was, and he put the oil and said, you know, and you said, well, why don't everybody get healed? Because not everybody can receive it. That's all it amounts to. And said, oh, it burned when he put it on there, where he had the hernia on another part of the body. And says, it began to go away. And said, this time it was only a couple of months and so a whole year. Now, if thou can believe. But you're going to have to learn how to receive your healing. Like I said, I think we prayed and the spots come back the next day. But you held on to it and it's gone. It's, gone. it's permanently gone. Not coming back no more. Same as this hearing. Thank you, Jesus. Can you hear that? Thank you, Jesus. Somebody get over here and whisper or something. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you hear it? Okay. <laughs> Open loud and clear right now in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Perfect hearing right now. I command it to come in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Now listen to what she has to say. Still, still not the same tonight. You have got some gain now. You've got some gain. Okay, so you're going to grab this every day? I will. And whenever I get to see you, whenever the boss lets me come back over here. <laughs> You're going to say this is healed. Healed too. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's touch him in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let them know who you are. Anything about you. Thank you, Jesus. But I see a big weight. Almost the enemies put on you with everything you're going through and, and trying to make you feel like you deserve everything that you're going through in your body. But God said it's not so. In Jesus, in Jesus' name, break the spirit of infirmity. Thank you, Jesus. Heal him right now, Jesus. Give him strength. Give him strength to walk without this cane, Lord Jesus. Give him strength this night. In Jesus, precious name, I speak to your legs, your knees, your lower back, the ligaments, the muscles in your legs. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I even speak into your brain, a part of your brain, like it's something to do with the brain. In Jesus' name, let it all connect and let him be He'll let him get a miracle to this night. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look look upon me. Look upon me so I can see you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know who you are or whose son you are or anything. When you was a young man, you, you felt like there was a calling in your life. God just as sure as the world and the devil has accused you for a long time for not obeying that calling and the devil tries I don't know you but this is what I'm feeling the devil has made you think the things you're going through right now is because you didn't accept things but he's lying to you he's lying to you he's a lying spirit God set him free from this infirmity and every lie the devil has 
told him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I break the demonic, the demonic in Jesus' name. I break it right now. Thank you, Jesus. You have to have that cane to walk good or what? Now stand to your feet there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your back's bad. You have to deal with it. Demonic. Most cancer spirits are demonic. I, it didn't say he was possessed. That's a different thing. Oppressed. I break the demonic and the spirit of cancer in his body, and everywhere the cancer has touched and does damage, I cause healing in his body to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus In Jesus' name, let the pain go from his back right now. Let the pain go from his back right now in Jesus' name. Take the pain, we cast it to the pit of hell. In the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Thank you, Jesus. How are you feeling? The pain begin to lit up. Then there just a second till it always lets up. Thank you, Jesus. 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 How's your pain level now? One or two. Was it about eight or nine ago? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is that in your back? Is that what causes you to have, have this here more than anything? Thank you, Jesus. Did they fuse your back or something? They cut out on the disc. Thank you, Jesus. God, I ask for a creative miracle in his back. Brand new discs. All the pain go. Cancer is going to dry up from your body. In Jesus' name, all the cancer dry up, go from his body. Discs come into place. Strength come into his back. Pain leave. Satan, you're a liar and the father of it. He'll live and not die from this cancer. He'll proclaim the works of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Now, how are you feeling? Good? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come, come on. All way loosen. All way loosen in the name of Jesus. Let the leg loosen in the name of Jesus. Everything work fine in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come over here just a second. Stand where you was. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, stand and look upon me. Thank you, Jesus. How's your pain level? Pain still? Let me have that. You're going to get up every day and you're going to walk and the pain is going to completely leave you here in just a little bit. And you will come off of this thing. Get up every day. If you've got to walk with it, that's fine. But every day make an effort to walk without of it. And every step you make, give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. This thing's not into death. And ever, ever devil that's trying to cripple you for life, I rebuke it and I send it to the pit in Jesus' name. And I speak coldness. You know, sometimes we think the greatest witness we can give, we, we think, well, it's got to be scripture that the greatest witness we can give is what God has done for us. I don't know a thing about you, but God kept you when you couldn't keep yourself. He kept you when you could could have run five hundred miles to hide. 
I don't know you, but the Lord knows you. You've been through a lot and had lots of hurts. Some of them from church folks. From church folks. But tonight you brought them up here. You knew what I was talking about. You're a new person. You're a new man. You're walking out of this. By the help of Jesus, you're going to walk all the way out of this. And you're going to have a marvelous testimony for the Word of God. And people are going to want to know your testimony. A year from now, you're going to be a, an entirely different thing. There's something, too, about at night time, the torment that sometimes wants to come to you. Not an all-time thing, torment. The enemy tries to torment. That's being drove from your mind. When you was much younger, the Lord used to talk to you in dreams. And God's going to talk to you again in dreams just as sure as the world. In Jesus' name. So why don't you get all the rest of them, the outside and everything? My job's not to clean people up on the outside. Mine's to clean them on the inside. They'll work out their salvation with fear and trembling. Stop trying to work it out for them. Stop working it out for them. Some people have this conviction and some have that. Stop trying to work out people's convictions. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if you ever played a guitar in your life, but I see a guitar that wants to go in your hand just as sure as the world. Huh? You always want to learn, but you shall learn just as sure as the world. I like to see a red guitar just as sure as the world. Jesus, in Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else want prayer? Quick, quick, quick. quick. Y'all put up with my poor preaching until I could get to this, I guess. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody in your back, I'm trying to quit. It's already late. I'll pay for it tomorrow. Is it like a catch or something? I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, it's a catch. It's a catch. It's a catch. In Jesus' name. God, I bind this from his body. And we speak healing in Jesus' name. The muscles, even spasms at times. God, I bind it off of his body in Jesus' name. And I speak healing. Tonight it will begin. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Almost, does it wake you up sometimes during the night? That's what I'm You'll sleep good tonight. That'll be the first night. The next night will be even greater. This is going to be a process. Process, but it is being moved from you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. We've got to... Right here. Food gets hung up, God. Uh, hernia. Mm -hmm. oh, you and me both. I had one once before, and the Lord healed me. And, uh, and I know God says, what do you do? Well, I hadn't went to the doctor in about five years. I'm not saying that I go to the doctor, but what I do is get prayer. You'd seen me two days ago from moving oak furniture. Me and oak furniture in 64 don't work. I was in the bed. I was in the bed Tuesday. I called Brother Wiley and said, I ain't going to be able to come if, if I don't get prayer. He prayed for me and said, you're going to be all right. I laid down a little while. I said, I can't lay in the bed. i got to get up by faith. Well, it begins to leave me. Do I got a little of it still? Yeah. Well, it's going to leave me. Because by faith, by faith, by faith. Now, I've seen God do this hundreds of times. Just one particular thing. If somebody can agree, who will agree with me? If any two agree, who will lay their hands on me? There's one. Just lay it on the show. There's two. That's three. I lay my hand and by agreement the word of God. We command this hernia, this high hernia to go in place and stay in place. The tear and causing the food. In Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Jesus. And watch your heart during the Christmas season. I see the enemy wanting to rear up from a direction. You know what direction it comes from. Already tried to rear up. Show theirself. You keep your tongue and watch God fight this battle just as sure. It's almost like something's going to happen. But God's going to say it is going to happen. 
And that's what's going to make them. Don't make no difference what me and you say. But God said it's going to happen in Jesus. You lying devil. You talking about spirit of Jezebel. That's what it is. In Jesus' name, we bind the spirit of Jezebel. You're cursed. Every weapon formed against me shall not prosper, is what the word says. And every tongue that's raised in judgment will be brought down. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Mama, ma, kati, ala, koshanda, kiala, takata. Thank you, Jesus. I see a circle around you. I know you go to some church over there. What is it? Life points and life something, life. What is it you go over there? But I see a circle around Huntsville, Alabama. I see God going to use you in a revival. It ain't going to be a one day thing. It's going to be a continuous thing. It may just be a few days and then next week a few days, but God's going to think there's going to be a lots of souls brought in just as sure as the world. Lots of water baptisms because you don't mind, and I don't either. I don't either. I done got tired of these people tell me it don't matter. Right. It does matter. It does matter. If the blood, has, he said he overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of Testimony. You know, you, you can talk the blood all you want, but if it's not applied, and you know how it's applied, remission of sins is at water baptism. And then there's another place that says, repent, be converted. So at the time of refreshing, so the blood is applied when we obey the gospel. Just like when they killed the lamb, they put it on all three points. The same thing, repentance, water baptism, in villain. And I can't help and says, what God is going to do to all of them that don't understand? i got to put that in their hand. God's hand. He's a merciful God. But I'm going to preach That's right. how to get it applied. That's right. And they've run me out. I ain't doing it with a haughty spirit. They're going to run me out. But I'm telling you, I see just a boo-goo or something. It sometimes looks like the spring of the year. They're going to call you over there, and something's going to start, and you're just going to have to make many trips back there. I don't know if you do something else or what, but everything will work, work together. It all work together. Time and everything. In Jesus, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. Thank you, Jesus. It's not one person just running their tongue. There's an older person involved in it, too. Just as sure as the world. God's fixing to clip some tongues. And they're not to have an ugly spirit, because I pray for people that... But God's going to clip some tongues, just as quiet and quietening the spirit in Jesus' name. Anybody else wants special prayer? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Your back still feeling good? You can walk over here if you want to without that thing. Feel pretty good, didn't it? you walk out of that thing. Do you know the people that you... See, we want to tell them, repent, be baptized. But when people look at you and say, look what my Jesus done, that's the best testimony of all. That's how they, you know, what me and Brother Brett was saying, it says to go into all the world and make disciples. When we stop letting preachers, I'm a nobody. You understand? This man here's probably got better qualification. I know he can preach better than me. I, I just talk. Brother Conway talked a lot. But boy, when the Holy Ghost got on him, it was unbelievable. But if, when they see what God has done, they want to know about that God that done it. If he'll do it for you, he'll do it for me. If he'll do it vice versa, he'll do it in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hands at the Lord of glory. He's been here. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we feel your presence right here, right now. God, we thank you for what you've done and spoken, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the message, God. There was such wisdom in that message, Lord. God, if we would just break it and no close to us, Lord. Lord, to cleanse our hearts. Lord, when we get clean hearts, we get clean lives. Lord, I just thank you for your service tonight. Thank you for using the vessel. Lord, replenish him. I know it's tired, God. Anytime you're, you minister, Lord, it's exhausting. God, I pray that you touch him. And Lord, you keep him safe tonight as he travels his next destination, Lord. We'll be careful to praise you for it. God, we just love you. Lord, may this spirit go home with us, Lord, in our cars, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I love on Brother Compton tonight. Go in the fear of the Lord and shake hands, be friendly. God bless you. We'll see you this weekend.